Hello everyone, today I'm going to be unboxing, setup and testing the new Creality Ender 3 V3 SE. So recently I added a BR Touch as an upgrade to my old Ender, Ender 3 V2 printer but for some reason I, after installing it, I can't get it to work anymore. I can't figure out the correct offset and it's even harder to level the bed properly. So I decided to just get this printer to end the bed leveling hassle. So first inside the box you have your free sticker, nozzle cleaner, installation guide, 20 meters white PLA filament to test your printer. You're also gonna get one plier, M3 and M8 hexagon head cap screws, one extra nozzle for replacement and fixing clip assembly, more hexagon head cap screws with spring washers. Here's your toolkit that came with it, so you don't have to worry about your tools, storage card and a card reader. One power cable. Here's the LCD screen. Comparing to my old Ender 3 V2, the screen is smaller and both using a knob to navigate the menu. Here's your material rack assembly. Here is your main gantry frame. And here is your uh, base component. Comparing to Ender 3 V2, the cable now comes with a flat sleeves and so you don't see any visible wirings except the connectors. And in the other side, you have one cable, which is the Z-axis motor cable. So now let's go ahead and install the uh, gantry frame. From the top, I'm going to use M3 by 8mm screws to secure the gantry from the top part of the base. Now let's flip it sideways and use 6 M3 by 14mm screws to secure the frame in place. Now let's go ahead and connect this screen. Next let's install the material rack. Next let's connect the extruder cable into the extruder adapter board. After connecting the extruder cable, let's secure it in place using the FFC fixing clip. After installing the clip, let's insert the extruder cable into the fixing clip. Next, let's connect the uh, Z-axis motor cable. Since I'm in the US, I will change this to 115 volts. Let's connect the power cable, place the filament on the material holder. Let's go ahead and turn it on for the first time. I actually tried to navigate using the screen but I realized it wasn't a touch screen. So just like the old Ender 3 V2, it is using the turn knob to navigate the screen menu. So now let's go to prepare and extrude to prepare the material. And this will basically prepare you to insert the filament to the extruder. Now it's prompting you to cut the filament tip at 45 degrees angle. Now let's push in the filament to the extruder. After inserting it, let's go ahead and confirm it. Now this is what I'm excited about, the auto leveling feature. Leveling the bed in my old Ender 3 V2 was a pain in the butt. But now let's see if this upgrade is really worth it. If you look at the screen, this will show you all the values with color coding. Value in green means platform is level. Value in blue means relatively level. Yellow means slightly inclined. Red means significantly inclined. Now that the leveling is done, let's insert the provided SD card and test print something. If you want to install the Creality Slicer, you can use the file in the SD card from Creality or go to this website, download, download the latest slicer and install it. When you first open the app, this will be in Chinese language by default. Just click on the drop down and select your language and click OK. To add your Ender 3 V3, select Ender series from the left menu, then select the Ender 3 V3 SE from the list by clicking the add button. Next is to set the and confirm your nozzle diameter, then click OK to finish the setup. 
From the menu, let's select the print and it should show you the provided test file for printing. Let's select that and confirm it. If you want to calibrate before printing again, just turn calibration on then confirm it. I already calibrated it so uh, I'll just leave it as it is. I wanted to change the speed so by selecting the tune, you have the option to change the value of the printing speed. So uh, I'm gonna try 200 for now. Let me change the speed to a higher value like 300. So the test finished in 1 hour and 13 minutes. So the print quality isn't that bad at all. It is definitely better than my Ender 3 V2. It is faster and easy to set up. I tried another print for my IKEA pegboard and it was perfect and quick. So far I'm satisfied about the print result. This is definitely a time saver for me every time I print something. I don't need to level the bed anymore like I used to and this is what I have expected with this machine. If you're looking for a beginner printer, this is definitely a good buy. It's not that expensive and really easy to set up. If you ask me if I'm happy with the upgrade, absolutely. This is a real upgrade to my Ender 3 V2. I can now relax do other stuff and not to keep checking once I press the print button. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys on my next video.